Hi, I'm Annabelle Trades, and today I'm going to be building a planter box for my videographer Jacqueline's apartment balcony. Let's do this. This video was brought to you by Aquar Systems. I bought this wood at a local sawmill for $100. There is some sort of disease that is wiping out a lot of our cedar and cedar adjacent trees here in Tennessee, but it does make for some really discounted wood, so we should put it to some really good use. Cedar is a fantastic wood to use for outdoor projects because it is extremely water and rot resistant. That's why we're gonna use this for these planters. One thing that should be mentioned about this wood is that it is rough sawn, which means it was sawn with a bandsaw mill. It's not smooth. It is not dried, so it's great for outdoor projects, but not so great for indoor projects. But if you don't have access to a local sawmill, you can easily just go to your local home store and get pieces of wood that are four inches wide that'll work just fine for this project. By the way, I do have free plans available. If you are interested in getting those, go on over to my website, anavaltrades.com, and you can download the free PDF. One thing about using this lower grade lumber is that you do have to be a little bit more choosy as you're making your cuts. But again, because it's so affordable, it's okay to throw away bad little spots. There's a little crack right here. I could still get my seven inch piece and be free of that crack, but because this wood is still wet, I'm gonna want to just kind of avoid it cracking further as it starts to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it all the way back here and I'm still gonna be able to get several pieces for the planter out of this board. There's another little inclusion here that is just a little ugly. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out as well, but still get plenty of usable lumber. One little trick when you're using rough saw and lumber to get the most out of your wood is to take your smallest piece and size all of the rest of your wood to that smallest piece. When you're ready to assemble them, do yourself a favor and find a nice square block that you can use to kind of clamp things against and keep things square. Anytime you have a smiley face in your wood, make sure that that goes inside because as you attach it here and here, it's going to pull it into the wood if you were to do it here, then over time it's going to cup and warp away from the joint and give you a little gap in your joint. As you're doing this, pay attention to the face or the showing side of the wood and choose the prettiest side to face out. As I'm laying these out, take a quick note of how I'm doing it. Every other one wants to have the edge facing out. This is going to add a whole lot of strength and rigidity to it and keep it from racking. Now, because we don't want to split the wood, I'm going to pre-drill and then screw it together. We want at least two screws per board. Once you've got a few boxes assembled, that's when it starts to get really, really fun because you can make these modular and also adapt them to every single one of your needs. You can make them taller, obviously by just changing the dimensions of the wood that you're putting together in the boxes in the first place, you can make them bigger, but you can also make them modular by, you know, making different shapes with the boxes. Once you've decided the height and layout that you want your planters to be, you can start to do the finishing touches. Last thing that these things need is to be connected so that they don't pull apart and to get a floor in them. We're going to actually use this black plastic as the floor of these planters because A, there's not that much dirt and therefore not that much weight. So this will actually hold it in just fine. But by adding a series of runners along the bottom, we will not only add a little bit of aesthetic interest to the front, it will also raise it up off the ground a little bit so that that will allow for drainage. This black plastic allows water to flow through it. So it's not just going to pool at the bottom and drown your plants. Not really being one to measure very much. I'm holding it over the box that it's gonna go inside and just getting a rough visual measurement. That also saves me some math and measuring mistakes. 
folded like a Christmas present. Get rid of these things. We've got the first runner on the bottom that's gonna raise it up and it'll give a little bit more drainage and also give a little more visual interest at the end of the planter. And once you've got the first one, just repeat. When it comes time to attach these, I'm going to use these two little runners screwed in from the back. That's the easiest way to attach them. You'll never see it from the front. So you just choose your front side, which side is the prettiest. Actually, I think this one is. Then we're going to Stick these in. You want to just scraps from the build. I just want them to be just short enough that they're underneath the top of the soil line so you're never going to see them. Clamp them in. As I mentioned at the beginning, this video was sponsored by Aqua Water Systems. These are house hydrants that have a quick connect valve that you can stick a hose right into that automatically turns it on and off. As you can imagine, this is going to be a super handy system to have around the farm and garden, so I cannot wait to get this installed. I'm most excited about installing this specific hydrant right here because this is where I fill the animal water buckets every day. So once I've got this installed, I will simply be able to set the bucket right here, stick in the valve, and it'll automatically turn on, and when I'm done, I can take it off. Let me show you what system I was using before. Here's the system I had going before. In here is the single hydrant that services the entire lower portion of this property. It is behind here to stay insulated and not, you know, explode the pipes inside the bathroom of the barn. And I'd have to reach in here into Spider City, Snake City, Wasp City to turn it on and off. Obviously, that's not like a huge problem or anything like that, but I am very excited about the possibility of a easier solution. Aqua couldn't have made these things easier to install. I'm going to use a hole saw to cut out the side of the barn. Obviously, I made sure that there was no wires, water pipes, or anything else important behind this. Once I've drilled from the outside wall, I can locate my hole on the inside wall and drill here as well. Then you poke the nozzle through from the outside and locate it inside. Because I'm going to be remodeling this bathroom soon anyway, I'm going to use PEX tubing with push to connect fittings because they are reusable and therefore changeable. So we poke this in from the outside and we want to make sure that everything lines up with the handy dandy mounting sticker that came with the system. We're first going to drill for the anchors. Once everything's drilled, we're going to get rid of this sticker. All right. So now we need to install the anchors. Then we want to put on the gasket, put this back through and screw it all together. All right, now let's go hook it up from the inside. So what I've done here is teed in from the outside line to the existing line in here. And I can just push this little piece of pipe into the fitting. Once we've got that in and it's the right length, we want to stick the next elbow on. And then we can do the up one, and we can do another elbow up here. And we'll put on a little bit of Teflon tape, the joint here. And then we'll put this guy on. There it is. I think we should be good now. This is the thing that really sold me on this system. It's a quick connect and turn on hose. If you're interested in installing Aqua water systems in your home, click the link in the description of my video. Here I've got some amazing fish compost soil that I'm using in my large garden as well. This will give the plants a nice head start. And because it is in a planter, I want to be able to keep a little bit of moisture control. So I'll move next to here to my mulch pile. And this is mulch plus compost. Mulch is amazing at keeping moisture in the garden because wood acts like a sponge. It basically soaks up water when it's wet and then releases it slowly as it's drying. So we're gonna use 
some mulch on the top of these because these are going to be sitting on the top of Jacqueline's balcony in the sun most of the day. So we'll get a little bit of extra help here from that mulch. We've got a couple herbs that we'll put in here for her. We've got some oregano, rosemary, and thyme. Little kitchen garden. Now it just needs a little water and she'll be grown. All right, this right here is exactly why I was so excited to install this system at the farm. It makes changing nozzles and attachments for all the different things that I need to do down here all the time, super easy. Give these little plants a drink. And there you have it. We have a new planter system for Jacqueline's balcony. We have an amazing new watering system for the farm and I am super, super happy. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and for supporting my channel in that way. If you'd like to support me in other ways, there are links for my Patreon and my merchandise below. I hope you leave this video feeling challenged, inspired and excited to get outside and to do things with your own hands as well. Cheers. <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought that was a enormous spider. It was like not a normal sized spider, just to be clear. But it wasn't a spider, period. It wasn't a spider, just to be clear. Just to be clearer. <laughs> That is the size of a robin. Cool. Welcome to the south. This thing on Instagram that that's like has the leaves flying. Do 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 do. All right. What are you guys eating? Oh, grain. Cause you got in the barn. Hey, hi, boy. You excited to get some sips of water over here? Yeah. We're gonna fill up your water bucket right in just one second any easier to install. I located the general position. Oh, ah! oh God. Ah. Ah! Just kidding. <laughs> because I'm going to re- <clears throat> Woo! That's not how that works. <laughs> oh, I thought it was like you just squish it in. Ha 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 ha!